Hi, my name is Jordan King. I'm the STARS program coordinator here at AISHI. And this video is part of a series where AISHI staff highlight data quality tips and resources for credits in the latest version of STARS. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through everything you need to know to submit high quality and accurate STARS 2.2 content for OP7, the food and beverage purchasing credit. During this video, I'll be referencing a few different resources that will be helpful as you work on this credit or others. These include the STARS Technical Manual, the My Submission section of the STARS Reporting Tool, the STARS 2.2 Review Template, and the AC Help Center. If you're new to STARS and don't know how to access some of these resources, check out our short video on navigating the resources and support section of STARS, which can be found under the section on Basics. The Food and Beverage Purchasing Credit recognizes institutions that are supporting sustainable food systems through their food and beverage purchases. An institution earns the maximum of six points available for this credit when the weighted cost of foods that are sustainably and ethically produced and or plant-based is equivalent to 100% or more of the total food and beverage expenditures. We encourage institutions to pay close attention to this credit because it's part of our standard review and it has one of the highest error rates in STARS. This credit is also particularly time consuming because it requires a comprehensive inventory, so catching issues before submission can save your institution significant time. You can find a summary of common issues in one of two locations, either the Help Center article or the STARS 2.2 review template. For this video, we'll be using the STARS 2.2 review template to go through each of the common issues you might see. The first two common issues we see under this credit both involve data outliers. If reporting a sustainably or ethically produced percentage of 20% or more, we will check the inventory closely for other common issues and to ensure that all items counted meet criteria. The same goes for reporting a plant-based percentage of 80% or more, as this may indicate inconsistency in how plant-based foods are defined and or calculated. Like I mentioned, this credit requires a completed STARS food and beverage purchasing inventory, or an equivalent inventory to ensure transparency and comparability. Like Asia has done with other credits, we've created a food and beverage purchasing inventory template that you can use. This document can be accessed in the Help Center article for this credit under the Templates and Tools section, but you can also upload an alternative inventory that includes all of the following information for each product being claimed. The product name, label, or brand, the product description or type, and the recognized sustainability standard being met. I wanna give you a quick tour of the inventory template because it can also be a helpful resource. There are instructions for using the spreadsheet as well as automatic calculations that you will be able to plug into the reporting tool when you're ready. There are several tabs for your itemized inventories. And then there is a standards and terms tab if you need to quickly double check the eligibility of any of your items. Now let's talk about what you'll actually be able to claim in your inventory. First off, it may be helpful to mention that while STARS 2.1 recognized local community-based products that may or may not have been sustainably produced, version 2.2 only recognizes products that are sustainably and or ethically produced in addition to plant-based foods. So these are the two categories under which you'll be reporting food purchases. Certification is not required for a product to count as plant-based, but in general, a product must be certified or verified to count as sustainable or ethical. But I'll cover certification exemptions in a little bit. In order to help you identify plant-based foods, we've included a detailed definition and examples in the technical manual, which you can see here, as well as additional documentation in the Help Center. Since this is new for 2.2, please reach out or post in the community if you have any questions about the plant-based portion of this credit. One common mistake we see is omitting or not providing enough detail to justify each product's inclusion. This is one reason for using the standard inventory template we've created because there's already a column for each required piece of information so that you know you're not missing anything. Another common issue we see is counting third-party standards or verifications that are not listed in the technical manual. To count, a food or beverage product must meet one or more of the recognized standards listed here. This list has been reorganized to help you focus on the most prominent international certifications and eco-labels before exploring the less common or regionally specific standards. The more common standards we see reported include certified organic, certified humane, certified fair trade, and marine stewardship certification. For 2.2, we've added a lot of newly recognized standards and language has been added to define the minimum requirements that must be met for an unlisted standard to be recognized. 
If there is a standard you think should be recognized, please reach out to us so we can see if it might be added in an upcoming update. As a rule of thumb, if a certification isn't listed, it shouldn't count toward sustainable purchasing percentage. However, there is an exemption from the certification verification requirement. This exemption, which is called Institution Affirmed Production, is granted to producers who are engaged in sustainable production but for whom certification is either not accessible or not effective. To qualify, all of the criteria listed here in the technical manual must be met. The Institution Affirmed Production option is intended to apply in only a limited set of circumstances in which the institution has a close relationship with a producer and it is expected that only a very small percentage of purchases, if any, will qualify under the exemption for most institutions. Examples of purchases that may qualify include produce sourced directly from a campus garden or small producer that employs methods that are consistent with the principles of organic agriculture, and produce sourced through a regional food hub, organic growers cooperative, or local farm to institution program designed to connect small-scale sustainable producers with institutional purchasers. An institution is more likely to have the type of close relationship required to qualify for the exemption with a local producer, but there is no requirement that the producer be local to qualify. Another issue we sometimes see involves sampling. As you can see in this section of the credit language, Institutions must track food and beverage purchases for a 12-month consecutive period or use a representative sample that includes data from a full academic term or similar period. When using samples, institutions must accommodate for seasonal and other variations in food and beverage availability and purchasing. This section also states that the percentage must include total food and beverage expenditures to the extent feasible. This means that all product categories and food service providers should be included in the total food and beverage expenditures figure. A common issue we see is inventories and purchasing percentages that are based on a non-representative time frame, such as just one month's worth of purchases. Similarly, institutions may only focus on certain dining entities or food categories but exclude others. The final mistake that we occasionally see is including non-food items such as cutlery and cleaning materials in the inventory. It is okay if they're listed as long as it's clear they weren't counted toward the scoring percentages. For clarity, it's usually best to omit the non-food items entirely from the inventory. As a reminder, the AC Help Center credit article is a great resource for finding answers to frequently asked questions on this credit, as well as example responses from other institutions. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post in the STARS community or reach out to stars at We're happy to help. Thanks and best wishes on your STARS journey.